And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Gentlemen, Obama has declared a civil war upon everything, shall I say, traditional in America from the day he was installed into power. Oh, I know he was elected. We understand that. But he uh, declared war on every institution in America. We can name them from the military, which he has gutted from the top down. Oh, there are many men who are brave enough to still fight the battles. But the leadership that could fight the government is gone. Let's put it that way. Zero leadership. Zero strategy against ISIS. Isn't it interesting that all of a sudden our great fearless commander-in-chief is ordering ground troops into Syria after Russia took the lead? Isn't that odd? Zero education, zero culture, zero immigration, zero religion, zero science, zero business sense, zero liberty, zero policing. Obama's endgame a national police force. So it's all in government zero. Now you'd expect me to talk about the book, but I'm going to ask you some questions first. Have you been to your local bookstore to find my book, which is launched today? Were the liberal punks in the store courteous, or did you get negative looks and comments? Was Government Zero front and center, or was it hidden below Jane Has Three Mommies in the feminine hygiene section in the basement of the bookstore? Did you purchase one copy for yourself, or did you buy one for the liberal neighbor as well? The well-meaning liberal neighbor, the ignoramus who is certain that Obama is the greatest hero in the history of the world. Did you read the book? What is your favorite part of the book? What will you do when you finish reading the book? Will you give it away to a friend or neighbor? Those are some of the questions. Now, an article came out yesterday on World Net Daily, which I thought was great. Their headline was, GOP is not divided, it's compromised. I changed it to, Obama owns Republicans. It's a great interview by my good friend at World Net Daily, Art Moore, a really fabulous writer, an all-around wonderful man. And the article is so well written, I'm not going to read it to you. Because you can read it yourself on World Net Daily, you can read it on michaelsavage.com. But I will, I think I should summarize a bit of that. He asked me why another book. And my answer was, most people don't even know the extent of the systemic damage to all the departments and branches of government. I spell out what Obama did to the military, how he purged the military of every combat general who would have blown the whistle on Benghazi or taken ISIS out in a week. They're all gone. Shall I go on? Talk about my book? You want me to just do the news? Would you like a meatball recipe? Would you like me to talk about... Uh... I could do anything. I could talk about dogs today. I met a nice dog last night. And I know that the weather is changing because I was able to drink a half a bottle of red wine without a hangover or a headache. Now, admittedly, it was a very expensive bottle of red wine. I cannot drink it until the weather changes. My body is... I See, I'm a, I'm a natural man. I'm like Zorba the Greek. But I'm not Zorba the Greek. But a man like me should live a thousand years. Seems like I've lived two thousand years already. But the fact is, uh, I had a half a bottle of red wine, but it was Gaia. Those of you who know red wine, G-A-G-A, G-A-G-A, Italian. Now, why am I telling you about it? Because I don't want to talk about the book. I'd rather talk about good red wine right now. I'm in that mood. And I don't know where I'm going to go with this stream of consciousness. It could go all the way back to the crimson. It can go to the red and the black. It can go to the red badge of courage. It can go to anything you want to do that's colored red, including the government, which is all red. See, if I go with the red, the red leads to other red. And red always leads back to the reds who destroyed Russia and turned it into the Soviet Union. And the reds are now running the West. And what's different about the reds today is that the reds are suicidal. And that's a product of drugs, sex, and rock and roll, which has destroyed their DNA itself. Now, I don't care if they commit suicide. In fact, I wish they would. But the fact is they're committing suicide for the nation and getting away with it because the rats on the other side of the aisle are, well, let us say, helping them along. There was an interesting article in today's New York Post entitled, Why the Rat Watch the Rats Flee the Anti-Cop Ship. And the rats they uh, most particularly focus on is the biggest rat in the history of America, Al Sharpton. 
one of the worst haters in the history of the world, who made his entire career with a vermin lawyer with a ponytail, a little rat lawyer, who was last I checked tied up on a sex charge, Al and his lawyer buddy made tens of millions of dollars by suing the police department in New York City, along with Eric Holder and Barack Obama, or should we call him affectionately Barry from Honolulu. See, when you say Barack Obama, immediately you have a certain degree of respect. He's the president. But if you say Barry from Honolulu, you realize he's just a guy. He's just a guy, a pot-smoking kid from Hawaii who got very lucky with some very powerful handlers who put him in, into, into this position. Barry from Honolulu. Now, what if he doesn't really love the country? There are millions of Americans who hate being Americans. San Francisco is filled with them. The dominant number of people who live in the city hate this country. Their pride consists of saying they hate the country. They're so superior, they walk around telling you they hate the country. So what if one of them became president? What if one of these haters of America became the president? What might he or she do? Why, exactly what he is doing with his sorority. So you say, well, okay, we know all this. What can we do about it? I got to tell you, I have a 40-point action plan in the back of Government Zero. Unlike some who complain every day and whine, and I listen to it, all I hear is whining and screeching. You know, there's a saying, uh, patriotism is the last refuge of the scoundrel. I've been hearing that over and over in my head recently. It's, it's a long-forgotten phrase. Patriotism is the, the last refuge of the scoundrel. Just remember that. It's very important because I try to distinguish my brand of nationalism from the, shall I say, uh, the chorus of those who wrap themselves in the flag. The flag is beautiful, but watch out for those who wrap themselves in the flag, especially politicians who just, why a few years ago, just a few years ago, loved the Republican Party. In fact, most of the conservatives on radio loved the Republican Party as near as 1996. Remember that, Robert and Jim? Oh, they were invited to the White House. In fact, some of them said they were the water carrier for the Republican Party, but not today. They're all independents. They're all copying my lead and saying I don't exist. Well, that's very good. Thank you for following my lead. You know, when you're, when you're the lead sled dog, the only thing the other dogs see is you're behind. Did you ever hear that one? I saw that inside. I saw that once. There was a, a lawyer, a very flamboyant lawyer in San Francisco, very famous name, Melvin Belli. He drove a big white I don't know what it was, a fancy car, a Rolls Royce. Always had a flower in his lapel. He was known for his tort defenses, very flowery. And if he appeared in his office, his, his uh, brick-lined office on Montgomery Street, which I would do when I first moved to the city, some 20, I don't know when I moved here, in 74, I would walk around a lot more than I do now. I'd look in and he had a big sign on his wall, and it was something along those lines. I can't remember it. Robert, look it up. When you're the lead sled dog, all the other dogs see as you're behind. And they yap at you. I thought that was pretty good. I liked it. Well, today is the day we begin to win. Today is the day we begin to win. And the earth is shaking here in the Bay Area because of the minor earthquakes. Earthquakes. Last week, the sky was particularly unusual. In fact, a few other days, a few days ago, it was yellow. It was a very bizarre yellow. I never saw the yellow. And I took a picture of it on my new iPad, which has the best camera I've ever used in my life, going all the way back to my first Nikon F. And I couldn't believe the yellow, so I showed it to a man who's lived here his whole life and whose father lived here his whole life, who's a boater and a man who knows the air, and he said it's earthquake yellow. And he said it looks just like the sky looked in 1989 before the big one, the Loma Prieta earthquake. So any day now I could be on the air and you could hear a rumble and a tumble, and then there'll be nothing but a jumble, and that'll be it for, for the day. I don't know how deep the schism <laughs> might go, but you want to hear something bizarre now that I'm thinking out loud for a change, sharing my innermost thoughts with you up to a point. Do you know that I'd say a month before the Loma Prieta earthquake in 1989, I had at that time I was visiting a Chinese uh, martial artist who was also a fortune teller, like a Oh, I don't know. You wouldn't. He wouldn't call himself a fortune teller. He was a Chinese martial arts teacher, but he also could see. Okay, he had seeing abilities, and he said to me, "Move away from the water, and move up to the hill. Move up to a hill." 
I said, why? He said, just move away from the water, move up to the hill. That's what he said. And it wasn't too long before the earthquake. Now, I didn't move away from the water. In fact, I was living in a little house, single wall construction house. And during the earthquake, I thought that somebody had slipped acid into my orange juice because everything moved in every direction. I thought that my mind had gone. I didn't know it was an earthquake. It's a strange phenomenon. Well, I hope that my book, Government Zero, causes such a, such a shaking, such a shaking across the globe today. Because I believe the chapters are unique. The organization is as tight as a, the spinal column of an amphibian. And the fact of the matter is it has very important solutions for you to use in your future discussions and arguments with the ignoramuses around you, however nice they may be. That is the opening to my program. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O. I'm running for president to protect our families and communities from the plague of gun violence. It is both heartbreaking and infuriating that we lose an average of 90 Americans every day because of guns. And no matter what anybody says, this okay, is not Eva an Braun urban talking. problem. This is okay. a problem. Turn, that's turn Eva Braun off. Eva would like to take your guns away. The reason Eva wants to take your guns away is that she has private security called the Secret Service as does every other government official at a certain level and above. And if she has it, you shouldn't have it, because she's better than you. And, of course, if you bring in Syrian Muslims uh, of military age, mainly men, you don't need guns to protect yourself. Now, it is true they're rushing to buy guns in Europe. They wish they had a Second Amendment. The Israelis are rushing to buy guns to protect themselves from their throat cutters. But uh, at the same time, the world is awakening to the fact that the Second Amendment protects the citizenry, uh, you have demagogues like Eva Braun Clinton telling you that you shouldn't have a gun. You don't need a gun. So she'd like you to go in another direction. She'd like you to lose the freedom that was granted to you by people so much better than her. Let's play a little music, please. I need to have the Oki from Finoki song because I, I feel like it's a book party. I'd like you to join me today in having a little celebration with me. The book took me a year to write and six months to get it ready for publication. It took me months to get ready for yesterday, let alone today. Do we have the song yet? Because I'm ad-libbing. Still, I gave it three minutes ago. I said, look for it, but okay. Let's forget the song. We can go right to the callers. Because I like that song. I'm just an Oki from Finoki. You're going back to that line. If you're not the lead dog, the view never changes. That's the way it was written by some guy whose name I forget. But uh, Melvin Belli, the famous lawyer, changed that to saying... <laughs> If you are the lead dog, the only thing the other dogs see is your, and I can't use the word because it's a family show. We'll just say you're behind. I like Melvin Belli's version better. Uh, and that's why people resent Michael Savage, because they're looking at only one part of me. I, I don't blame them. I mean, if they could actually see how handsome I am, maybe they wouldn't be so embittered. Maybe they wouldn't sound like they have only one testicle. Maybe they would sound like men. 855-407-282. Let's go to the callers. Chris in Washington is giving us a book report. Chris, did you find Government Zero or was it hidden under feminine hygiene? <laughs> Dr. Savage, I purchased your book this afternoon in Barnes & Noble in Arlington, Virginia. The book was on the new release table, but it was hidden out of sight. And uh, it was um, on the back of it. It was, it was right behind the, uh, uh, it was on the other side, out of view uh, to most customers who will walk in. I asked the cashier why the book was placed there, and she said it was uh, corporate policy that determines where the books are placed. And <laughs> That's not, no, no, look, let me tell you something. Anyone listening to this show, if you go into a Barnes & Noble and it's not on the octagon table, demand that they put it on the octagon table. And number two, put it on the front of the octagon table because the publisher paid for that placement, period. You've got to help me with this. You understand the war we're fighting, and you know that a lot of it occurs right inside the bookstores. The book, the first battle, by the way, is inside the publishing houses. I'm shocked that uh, Center Street Books had the guts to publish publish this book, and they didn't. They didn't censor me. They didn't edit me. And believe me, there were things in here that are quite controversial. So I say we've gotten a 